Hello, I'm Charlotte Hopkins and I'm an Information Officer at London Metropolitan Archives. We're going to look at using Collage, the London Picture Archive, to research the fashions and entertainment culture of 19th century London. We will look at things like what did your ancestors wear and what did they see as they visited or lived in London. The Picture Archive covers over 250,000 images held at London Metropolitan Archives and the Guildhall Art Gallery. In a moment we will see how to use and navigate the website, then we'll uncover some examples of fashion styles and entertainment interests in the 19th century. Art historical sources can be a useful tool for your family history research. The London that our ancestors might have known is captured in photographs and through artists' impressions in prints and engravings. There are various ways to find images on the London Picture Archive. You can do a straightforward keyword search in the box using terms such as fashion or costume, or a particular street or venue. Another way is by browsing the sample galleries and collections which have sets of images. Once you've selected an image, it's possible to zoom in using the plus button to see the detail. On the right hand side, there are various options to print a reference copy for yourself or to purchase a high quality digital version. You can place the image in a separate window to make it fill the screen by viewing full image in new window. A gallery such as Fashion in London uh, is not an exhaustive representation of all items relating to fashion, but it is a good sample um, cross-section of different periods. When doing a general keyword search or subject, you can limit the date range using the advanced search here on the left hand side. And you can then take a closer look at the images. This one's for fashion. And then we can go back and try the ones for costume in London from 1800 to 1900. As you can see, there is a lot to explore. When we think of fashion in the 19th century, we probably conjure up an image of the full skirts of women in their crinolines and the top hats and long coats adorned by men. Queen Victoria came to the throne in 1837 and there was quite a different feel to the fashions of the Regency and Georgian era that preceded her. This engraving shows two women and a man in evening dress in 1808. A key part of women's fashion at this date is the high-waisted empire line, 
which sits under the bust, the dress evolving from a neoclassical, loose-fitting, tunic style. A Spencer jacket or shawl, gloves and bonnet are essential as are flat shoes. The lady on the right appears to be wearing a shawl, but a Spencer jacket was of a similar length and double-breasted, being named after George Spencer, the second Ella Spencer, following an incident where his coattails were burnt in a fire. This gentleman has a coat with tails, but cut higher in the front, a waistcoat and ruffled shirt underneath, with leg coverings and knee breeches buttoned and held in place by a drawstring. Of course, this is not the full story. Such prints will relate to examples of high fashion of gentlemen and ladies of high society, and the average person to be found on the street might get forgotten. But we can look out for figures in those more topographical scenes, ones where people are not the main subject. This watercolour by the North London artist Charles Henry Matthews, for example, which dates from around 1840, shows people casually strolling by with clothing details like this colourful shawl on the woman that passes through the gate. You can try searching for figures in other paintings in areas that your ancestors might have lived. A popular event which has gone down in Victorian history is the Great Exhibition of 1851. It was to bring together the works of industry of all nations as an international exhibition of culture and industry taking place over a period of six months. On the horizon in this print is a view of its famous Crystal Palace building in Hyde Park. All manner of people turned out to the exhibition and would want to be seen in their best clothing. We can see the ladies in this close-up with their bonnets and the men with their top hats, which was by now a common sight. The full skirts of the women can be observed with their layered petticoats. Crinolines began to emerge in the 1850s and were made from a skeleton of spring steel wire. It originated in France with its first British patent in 1856. This fashion plate from 1860 displays indoor clothing typical of the period. Can you spot the following features? Sloping shoulders, rosettes of lace and pleated ribbon trimmings along a Van Dyked V-shaped hem. Full bell-shaped skirt over crinoline with frill tiers around the dress to build up layers, box pleated ribbons on the underskirt, smooth fitted waist over a boned corset and tight bodice. Plaid pattern, influenced by Queen Victoria's residence at Balmoral Castle in the 1850s. A black Chantelet lace shawl. We can use fashion to help date images, but we must be aware that some items were often worn over a long period of time, not like the fast fashions of today. Particularly in print representation, dress can be romanticised or fictionalised. The invention and development of photography in the 19th century saw the expansion of the recording of individuals to the middle and lower classes. There are some good examples of everyday clothing in the Wilson collection in our picture archive, which feature areas in South London, such as this bicycle club. And here, London's last night watchman, with a traditional lantern, a cutlass attached to his waist, and a rattle tucked beneath his sash to attract attention. And a portrait of an elderly man leaning against a wall of a wooden shed, smoking a pipe. We have seen that the Great Exhibition was a big draw for the people of London in the mid-19th century. Other forms of entertainment peculiar to this period can be explored via the Granger Entertainment's collections and the Unusual Bodies Gallery, 
on collage the London Picture Archive. One such venue was the Egyptian Hall on Piccadilly, established by William Bullock in 1812. A variety of subjects were shown here, including art exhibits, panorama scenes and individual curiosities. Here are a few more examples you can explore. A range of evening entertainment was available to the Londoner. Popular forms included public houses, theatre and music halls. The Oxford Music Hall was one of the earlier musical venues in the West End of London and was located at the corner of Oxford Street and Tottenham Court Road, just in front of Hanway Street. Performers such as Mary Lloyd and George Roby appeared here. Another useful collection on our picture archive is the London County Council Theatre Portraits Collection. Photography was a cheaper way of owning a likeness than the painted portraits of the past. The theatrical stars of the day had studio portraits made into carte de visite, which was the size of a small postcard that could easily be carried around by their fans. Here is Mrs Patrick Campbell, known for her sharp wit and tongue, and later for her performance in the starring role of Eliza Doolittle in Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion. You can discover more via the Collections tab and the LCC Theatre Portraits. We hope you have enjoyed this insight into the London of our 19th century ancestors. You can contact us in a number of ways by email or the other links shown here. Please do share what you discover via our social media channels.